Today we'll be looking at the stroller market in general, revisiting the subject matter from one of our more popular videos entitled A Comprehensive Guide to Choosing the Right Stroller for Your Lifestyle, in which we strove to tackle the problem of helping you sort out the differences between different stroller types in order to look past the advertising and really analyze what will fit best for your needs and environment. A lot has changed since that video, both in terms of the market and also with our own knowledge, where almost two years of daily consultations with patrons have given us a wider and more nuanced understanding of how best to pair models with parents. So let's get started then, breaking down the market into understandable categories and explaining what each broader type of stroller excels at and in which ways it might fail to do what you want it to. And as before, we'll begin with ultra compacts, which are the smallest size strollers available, designed specifically with an eye towards being lightweight, having a small folded size, and being easy to fold and carry, all of which it's important to note are characteristics that have nothing to do with how an ultra compact actually functions when strolling. That being said, ultra compacts can be quite useful if purchased for one of the following three purposes, as a travel stroller, in particular those models that fold down to within cabin luggage limits, for keeping in the trunk of your car and maybe pairing with a car seat, or possibly as your primary stroller, provided that you live somewhere with very smooth streets, don't need much in the way of carrying capacity, won't need to use your stroller for more than a few short trips each day, and also have specific need for a stroller that's easy to fold and carry, such as for example, if you need to fold your stroller in order to negotiate the subway as your primary means of transport. Ultra compacts fail to work well for people in my experience when they're bought to fulfill the roles of larger, sturdier, and more terrain capable models. So please note the following that ultra compacts with reversible seats should be avoided as there is simply no way to build a reversible seat large enough on such a small chassis. That ultra compacts are not ideal for newborns, at least other than as a short term holiday solution. And that ultra compacts will wear down and break quickly if you overstress them with added weight or regularly force them to drive over gravel, cobblestones, dirt roads, and so on. You should not attempt to hack the basic carrying capacity of ultra compacts by hanging heavy bags from the handle, nor should you use wheeled boards for a second child. And if you plan to stroll somewhere rougher than smooth pavement and indoor mall-like environments on a regular basis, then you need to buy a bigger stroller. Additionally, ultra compacts like the GB Pocket, for example, that overachieve by folding down so small that they can be tied atop a backpack, should only be purchased for travel, and only if you really need something that small, while models that are too large to pass as cabin luggage should be judged harshly for their sturdiness and performance characteristics as they effectively fall into our next category, small size daily models. Small sized daily use strollers are larger than ultra compacts and have more or less the same features one finds with full size models, including being built sufficiently sturdy to handle regular everyday use. Unlike ultra compacts, small size daily models are usually not ideal for travel, but are still specifically oriented towards use in urban environments, both in terms of their small size being useful for navigating crowded spaces, but also due to their generally poor terrain capability and also towards use with a car, since they can be folded quite compact due to the use of features like foldable seat frames to achieve a one-piece fold. And models in this class are ideal then if you're looking for an everyday stroller but live in a city, where these models can provide a little defined space of your own with sufficient protection for your child and enough storage capacity for carting around some gear while not being so large as to cause problems on public transport or so heavy that you can't carry your stroller up the stairs if you live in a walk-up. Terrain capability varies by model, with sturdier models like the Jules Hub Plus significantly outperforming slimmer models like the Cybex Mios, but most small size daily strollers can tackle a little gravel, park grass, and uneven sidewalks, though note that if you live in an older European city with really rough cobblestones, then these aren't the strollers for you. You either need to go bigger or get a three-wheeler. In addition to the limited terrain capability, small size daily strollers, at least the reversible seat variants, can be a bad choice if your child is already a bit older, as the seat frames tend to be smaller than on larger sized models. And additionally, even though the carrying capacity with these strollers is better than with ultra compacts, it's still limited by chassis size, meaning that small size daily strollers aren't the best choice if you will be reliant on your stroller for big grocery expeditions, and full on picnics and day trips with these models ought usually to be planned with an extra mode for carrying stuff like a backpack. Moving on, we get to mid-sized models, which is admittedly a vague term, but by which I mean single child, four wheel models with reversible seats, rear wheels usually around 12 inches in diameter, and a folded package that's not too difficult to stuff into the trunk of a medium sized car. So strollers like the Cybex Prium and the Jules Day Plus, and also weirder fashion or design oriented models like the Stoke Explory and the Mimazari. 
Mid-size models are the jack of all trades choice, built to take you around all day on errands, but still not too hard to fit in the trunk, packing a little extra suspension, but often failing to tackle real off-road terrain, or the worst of cobblestones. Though it's important to note that there's a lot of variation here, with the crucial differences among mid-size models, lying with seat size, overall longevity, based on how sturdily the model is constructed and how simple the mechanisms are, and terrain capability, where models like the Boogaboo Fox, for example, with its 8.5 inch front wheel, excel far beyond the capabilities of most other mid-size strollers. Looking beyond these differences, the mid-size class as a whole is the place to look if a reversible seat is a must, and if your stroller will be your primary means of transporting your baby, but you still need something that will fit in the trunk. If you need a bit better storage capacity, terrain capability, or a larger seat than a small-sized model can provide, but are turned off by going for something even larger and heavier due to the storage or carrying considerations. The wide difference between models makes judging the negatives a bit complicated as well, but generally, and with a few exceptions like the Upper Baby Cruise V2 and the Jules Day Plus, mid-sized models tend to be a bit fragile and loosen up quite a bit over time, due to trying to stay competitive with regards to weight on one hand, while also having quite complex mechanisms in order to really cram in extra functions, stuff like quote-unquote a one-handed fold, a lie-flat seat, and a flip-flop friendly brake. In addition, mid-size models tend to be an unsatisfying purchase when parents buy them just to get something without really thinking through their needs well enough, while actually they ought to be buying a model from one of the other categories in this video that provides specific advantages with regards to size and weight, seat size, terrain capability, or overall durability. We recently made a video that can help you sort through the mid-size market to hunt for better models, and a link has been added in the description. Before moving away from single-child, four-wheeled, reversible seat models, I want to deal with one more category, which I sometimes refer to as Cadillac strollers, meaning somewhat oversized and more luxurious models of this type that are built stronger and more terrain-capable, with more basket space, and often slightly larger seats. Single-child-only Cadillac models like the Boogaboo Buffalo and the Stoka Trails have mostly disappeared on the current market, but some, though definitely not all, tandem models used in the mono configuration can often fill the same role, provided that they don't skimp on the size of the main seat, have strong suspension and good-sized front wheels, and haven't overly stretched out the length of the chassis to accommodate a second seat. The Upper Baby Vista V2 and the Emalunga NXT90 work well here, for example, but not the Silvercross Wave or the Cybex Gazelle. Cadillac models are ideal for people who need a stroller for heavy all-day, everyday use without a car as they can comfortably tackle a lot of rougher conditions and are ideal for off-roading in nature, handling all types of cobblestones, and for use in places that have harsher winters. Larger basket size and increased durability also mean that you can pack a lot of groceries and gear without worrying about the added weight impacting driving. On the flip side, Cadillac strollers are big and heavy of course, and are thus not a great match for use with a car, for carrying upstairs, or for use or storage in environments where space is limited. Additionally, it's worth noting that if the terrain capability, seat size, and durability aspects of Cadillac models are what you're mainly looking for, then they're not the most economic means of getting there in terms of size, weight, or generally price. The models from our next section are. And next up then, we're going to talk about three-wheeled strollers with front swivel wheels, of which there are many sizes, and which, as a result, provide alternatives to small-sized, mid-sized, and Cadillac class four-wheeled models that mitigate a lot of the downsides discussed so far. Because, you see, the three-wheeler is the most streamlined, economic shape that a stroller can take, allowing much more to be achieved for less weight, folded size, and often money. And in comparison to the vast majority of four-wheelers then, what you generally get with a three-wheeler is a larger seat, a sturdier, simpler, and longer-lasting build, better terrain capability, a naturally smaller folded package due to not needing a separate seat frame, and usually a very easy one-step, one-hand fold. What you give up with a three-wheeler are a reversible seat after the newborn period, though with some models you can get a convertible bassinet to extend reversed seating for a year or two, and often a little storage capacity as the shopping baskets on three-wheelers tend to be a little smaller and less easily accessible. For whom will a three-wheeler be a good fit? In my opinion, anybody who's looking for a daily use model and is okay with a forward-facing seat. As I said, three-wheelers come in all sizes, from small-sized models like the Mountain Buggy Swift and mid-sized models like the Bumble Ride Indy to larger models like the Baby Jogger Summit X3 or the new Upper Baby Ridge. When looking to get a three-wheeler for daily use, 
be aware that rear wheel size will be the biggest factor adding bulk to a model's folded dimensions, and for most people, it's not necessary to go that large, as even something like the City Mini GT2 will already provide terrain capabilities on par with four-wheeled Cadillac models. And also note that it's important to look a bit at how upright the seat goes on a prospective model, as not all manufacturers do this the same way, and in some cases, it's necessary to use a seat insert or a sit-up strap to achieve a more vertical upright position. Jogging and trail running strollers are a specific variant of three-wheelers, and require extra reinforcement and special features like added suspension, a dynamic handbrake, bigger wheels, and either a fixed front wheel, or at least a very sturdy swivel lock though a fixed wheel is better, in order to function well for their intended purpose. I'm not going to go too much into these features here, as we just did a video looking at jogging strollers in depth that I'll link in the description, but what I would like to say is that, in my opinion, if possible, it's best to get a dedicated jogging model separate from your daily stroller, as there are concessions made in the design of hybrid type models, heavier, larger wheeled three-wheelers with lockable swivel wheels that are advertised as joggers that make them both a bit subpar as running models by not being as streamlined as they could be, and also subpar as daily use models by often being a bit bigger and bulkier than otherwise necessary. Though note that hybrid models do work great for hiking if that's what you're going for. Moving on, we're going to deal with two child strollers, where the main choice will be between side-by-side -side models or inline, usually tandem, strollers, and where, in my opinion, side-by-side -side models are preferable if you're facing a longer period of needing a two-child stroller, say more than a year, while tandem models are better for periods of time that are shorter than this. The reason for this is that tandem models in the two-child configuration are just a lot less comfortable to use than side-by-side -side strollers, with problematic seating options often making the younger child less accessible than the older child, and being either heavy to tip and steer, in the case of front-loaded tandems, or sacrificing basket space with rear-loaded models. They do, however, have that one-child option though, which is what makes them better for a shorter crossover period. And if this is what you're looking at, then choosing a good tandem model is mainly about getting something that works excellently for one child and just gritting your teeth and bearing it for the two-child period. If, however, that two-child period is long enough that you really ought to aim for better comfort, then know that a side-by-side -side stroller will be much more maneuverable, will generally provide better terrain capability, and will be more stable. You'll also get equal access to both children and a wide shopping basket. The downsides of side-by-side -side models are often somewhat narrower seats, a wider stroller, though note that this is often overestimated by people, and most, if not all, side-by-side -side models are specifically engineered to fit through standard doorways. And of course, the fact that once that crossover period is done, most side-by-side -side models will be generally useless to you, unless you, for some reason, need a ton of extra storage space. To finish off, I'd like to make a few notes on the more unusual strolling solutions out there, starting by saying that, though not that common, four-wheeled fixed-wheel strollers, those big old-fashioned carriage-type models, are still a perfectly good choice for anyone who wants one, as long as you go with a good manufacturer like Emmalunga or the Silvercross Heritage line. They're bulky and heavy, of course, but sturdy and provide good terrain capability. Secondly, there's wagons, which, when seating more than two children, can be quite useful, but as far as the two-child models go, will generally suffer from the same maneuverability disadvantages that tandem models have versus side-by-side -side strollers. And lastly, for those who need something a bit more enclosed for dealing with bad weather, or that can double for use with a bicycle, there are chariots, which generally have transformable front ends so that they can be either pushed or pulled as a bicycle attachment. Chariots can be great, especially if you go out a lot in nature, but do of course take up a lot of space, and the one note I'd make if you're thinking about getting one is to get a model where you can attach a decent sized front wheel, as opposed to just the tiny wheel attachment sold with chariots intended for mainly bicycle use. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. To help you further, we've put several links to other videos in the description that will provide more information that's specific to several of the categories we covered here. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.